guys, welcome to Real World Basics with Manassas Park City Library. My name is Valerie and I will be your guide through this ongoing series of instructional videos as we answer some questions you might have about situations that you encounter in the world. For our first episode, we will be starting with the topic cooking because food is a fantastic part of life and knowing how to feed yourself is a super important life skill. A lot of the nutritional guides out there are kind of a one-size-fits-all, so it can make meeting your specific needs kind of difficult. So today's video will serve as a basic crash course in nutrition, so you can use this to reference as you begin your quest for healthy eating. As stated in the initial disclaimer, I am not a doctor, I am not a professional nutritionist, so any more in-depth questions you have should definitely be directed at a doctor or professional in the field of nutrition. If you do have any questions, uh, the staff here at Manassas Park Public Library are more than happy, happy to help connect you with resources. Let's get started. So the first thing we'll be covering in our nutrition episode today is the food pyramid. It's changed considerably throughout history uh, because health professionals are always learning more about the human body, what it needs more of, what it needs less of, so it has of course changed to accommodate these new recommendations and guidelines. Um, I do want to note before we kind of get into it that this is a general guideline. It doesn't take into account specific dietary needs, um, lifestyle diets, but it does serve as a good reference point for when you're just starting out and you're not quite sure where to go or what each meal should look like. So the first one I considered was in 1992. This is the one at least I was most familiar with. Um, with the pyramid, the lower you get and the bigger the block, that's how much you should be eating or what should make up the bulk of your plate at each meal. And as you get higher up, you should be eating less of each food category. So of course you've got your grains and your fruits and veggies and then your dairy, meat, nuts and beans and up at the top you have fat which they didn't want you to eat a whole lot of. In 2005 they changed it and they essentially just flipped it on its side and what this did was it took away the like the grains as the building block for every single meal. So there's still the different changes in width of the food categories to kind of indicate how much you should be aiming for, but they don't make it as one specific food category as the foundation for all of your meals. But again, you still have your grains, veggies, fruits, fats, again, the smallest little category here, your dairy, meat, nuts, and beans. And then in 2011, they changed it again, and now it looks like a plate. Um, <laughs> your uh, veggies and grains still make up the biggest categories, and then they've got your fruit and protein. Um, they change it to protein because you can get your protein from a variety of different sources, not just meat, nuts, and beans. And then you have your small portion of dairy. They did take out the category of fat because fat can be found in a lot of different uh, food categories. But we'll get more into that a little bit later in the video. So this one just serves as a great reference for what you should aim for your plate to look like at each meal. And if you don't hit every single food category at every single meal, that's totally okay. But again, it is just a general guideline. So let's move into our next section where we're learning about calories. So calories are simply a measurement of energy. When you consume a beverage or eat something, it'll tell you how many calories is in it or how many calories are in the serving size, and that just tells you how much energy you're gonna get from consuming it. Um, it doesn't really tell you any more about the nutrition you're getting from that food or drink, um, which is why counting calories is important to determine how much you're taking in on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but again, it doesn't tell you how much of your nutritional needs are actually being met. And traditionally, if you are consuming less calories than you're burning during a day, it will lead to weight loss. Or if you're trying to gain weight, you would consume more calories than you burn during a day. But we're gonna move on to macronutrients.
So macronutrients are broken down into three main categories. You've got carbohydrates, fats, and then protein. Uh, carbohydrates are going to be your sugars, your starches, and fibers, and most types of carbs are then broken down into glucose or sugar, uh, your blood sugar, which your body then uses for energy. Um, or then it will store it um, usually as fat deposits on your body. So carbohydrates are found in a variety of different foods. Your grains, this is a piece of bread if you can't tell. This is also a potato, so starchy vegetables are going to have lots of carbs in them, as well as fruits. Um, fats uh, are greatly needed by your body. Um, it supports critical bodily functions such as like your hormones, um, how well your body absorbs nutrients from all the food you eat, helps regulate your body temperature. Um, but fats are found in a lot of different types of foods. This is an avocado, so they have a lot of fat in them. Nuts have a lot of fat in them as well. And then proteins are also uh, very important for the body. They help support processes like how your cells signal to one another, um, your immune system, how your body builds its tissues, um, bone support and things like that. And a lot of protein rich foods are things like eggs, that's an egg if you can't tell. Um, Poultry, fish, other protein sources include like uh, beans, um, tofu, stuff like that. And it's important to note that there's a lot of crossover between the different macronutrients. So like nuts also have a good deal of protein in them as well. Um, you'll also find um, some carbs have a lot of fat in them if they've got a bit of oil or butter in them. So it's important to know that a lot of these nutrients are interchangeable. Um, you can find out how much of carbs, fat, and protein are in your food by looking at the nutritional label. It'll tell you in grams. Um, and it's important to know that everybody's uh, macronutrient needs are different depending on what your activity levels are, what your um, weight goals are, um, and things like that. Um, so counting these macros is a good way to determine if you're actually meeting your body's nutritional needs versus just counting calories on its own. So the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about today as we're going over nutrition is dieting. Um, so there's a number of diets uh, such as vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, keto, paleo, that really prompt more of like a whole lifestyle change. Um, so if you are thinking about doing that or you recently changed your diet or you have a changed diet, I just wanted to mention that your nutritional needs are going to uh, have to be adjusted. So definitely do some research um, either online, talk to your doctor, um, we're more than happy to help connect you with resources because we want to make sure that we're still meeting our nutritional needs in spite of any dietary restrictions or anything like that. Um, you do need to be cautious if you do your research online because there's a lot of information out there that isn't backed by science or it's given by people who aren't experts in the field of nutrition. So you just need to carefully vet your online resources and definitely run them by your doctor if you have any questions or concerns or aren't quite sure about how legit the information is. Um, I did want to briefly touch on um, flash or fad diets. Um, so these type of diets exist to provide like really quick results. By extreme dietary restrictions. So if you ever see a diet being advertised as lose 10 pounds in two weeks or something extreme like that, um, 
it's important to know that if you do follow that diet, you will see weight loss. You definitely will, but it is not sustainable because what you're doing is you're depriving your body of um, either calories or one of the three macronutrients we just talked about. And your body literally cannot function without them. So it's not sustainable and you will find yourself reverting back to um, pre-diet and you might see the weight loss stick around but you might not. So it's important to know that they're called flash diets for a reason and if you were looking at a more long-term type of diet um, they definitely exist but they do require um, more long-term investment to see those type of long-term results that you're looking at. So the Manassas Park City Library has a number of resources that can help guide you. And if you stop by, we are more than happy to help connect you with those resources, be it in print, online, um, helping you connect you with any of the people in our community who have expertise to share with you. So after going over what calories are, what macronutrients are, and how needs vary from person to person, what we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to show you how I calculate my specific nutrition needs. Um, to note, I am a 25-year-old female, I am vegetarian, and I'm fairly active. So my needs are, might be different than yours, especially because I'm 5'9". So all of those factors are taken into account when calculating your nutrition needs. So let's take a look and see. So for the first link that I've included with today's episode, this is the Body Weight Planner by the National Institute of Health. This is used for calculating calories. So what you're going to do is input uh, your information, and I'll use mine as an example. So you input your weight, you input your gender, you input your age, and then you input your height. For the physical activity level, um, you can estimate it and it will pop up uh, these options up here. So you take into account the activity level during work or school, which takes up kind of most of your day. So since I work at the library, I will put light as my work activity level. Now for my time outside of work, I would consider myself active. I do a lot of physical activity. I like to go hiking, walking my dog. I work out pretty regularly for about an hour a day. So then you save that, it will adjust your physical activity level. And then you move on to the next step. So this is what your goal weight is. If you wanted to gain lose or maintain your weight, you would just input that here in this category and the next steps will show how it adjusts your calorie intake to account for this goal weight. So for the sake of showing the differences in the calorie intake, I'm going to just put myself at maybe a 10 pound weight loss and if I wanted to reach my goal in 180 days, that's a very moderate uh, period in which you can lose 10 pounds um, or you can select a specific date here. Then you move on to the next step. For this step, this is your physical activity change. If I wanted to increase my exercise levels during the week to help burn more calories each day, I could input the percentage here but if I just wanted to reach my weight goal by diet alone, I would leave it at 0%. So for the sake of our nutrition episode, I'm just going to leave this one at 0%, but you can certainly calculate it on your own. Moving on to step four, this shows us our results. So if I wanted to maintain my current weight, these are how many calories I would consume each day. To reach my 10 pound weight loss goal in 180 days, this is how many calories it would have me eat. 
And if I wanted to maintain my weight loss goal once I reached it, uh, it adjusts the calories for you there. So this is a great reference point uh, to determine how many calories you should be eating each day. And the second resource that I have for you is the macro calculator. It is a flexible dieting. Uh, they say if it fits your macros, which is the cute little acronym up here. So again, you're going to go through and input all of your information. I'm gonna select the typing. You enter your gender, your age, more statistics, you enter your height, your current weight, and your goal weight. I'm gonna use the same numbers as I did last time on the other calculator. Estimated body fat, we will take a guess here. And again, it's gonna ask you about your activity levels. Uh, so this one is for your job and your daily routine. Again, I'm gonna put lightly active. Uh, how experienced are you with physical fitness? Intermediate, I work out at home. Let's see, weightlifting frequency. So again, these uh, statistics are going to vary person to person, and it's important to be as honest as you can with them. So I'm going to enter my information here. And then it asks some more personal information questions because again, it's going to tailor your macro guidelines to your specific needs. So we're gonna leave this as is, your nutritional preference. I am a vegetarian, so I'm gonna select that. Any other medical conditions that need to be accounted for? And then again, some more personal information. Oh, I find my family very motivating and how you best reach your goals. Let's say meal points and recipes. And then how experienced are you with tracking your macros? I will put semi-aware. And then you just have to enter your name and an email address. If you don't have an email address, just let me know. And I am more than happy to help set you up with one if you're not quite sure uh, where to start. And then on the next page, it's going to give us our recommended macros. So up here, it recommends that on a day-to-day -day basis, I consume about 119 grams of protein, 82 grams of fat, and then 268 grams of carbs. And this is accounting for that 10 pound weight loss that I was aiming for. As you can see over here though, it does give me a different uh, calorie intake. Um, it's good to check a couple of different uh, calculators to kind of get an average, whereas the other website asked me for how long it wanted, I, wa I wanted to take to reach my goal. This one didn't ask me that, so it's, gonna probably go for a faster weight loss goal. So that's why it has me consuming a bit less calories than the other one recommended. But again, these are just general guidelines. Um, when in doubt, always ask a medical provider uh, what recommendations they have or any resources they have. So that wraps up this episode of Real World Basics as we covered nutrition. Join us next week for Kitchen Basics, where we take a look inside my kitchen as I show you how to navigate your way around safely and efficiently. If you have any suggestions for topics or tutorials you'd like to see covered in real world basics going forward, don't hesitate to reach out to us on Facebook or through email, or definitely stop by and let us know what you'd like to see next.